In this video, we're going to explain how vector graphics represent images using lists of objects. We'll give some examples of typical properties of objects, and we'll use vector graphic primitives to create a simple vector graphic. So in the previous videos, we were looking at bitmaps, and these are images which store individual pixels of colour. In this video, we're going to take a look at vectors. Now, vectors use lists of information and maths to recreate an image based on the data. So let's have a look at this fairly simple circle. The properties of any geometric object or shape in a vector graphic are stored as a list. So if I was to recreate this circle here, purely by information I wrote down in text, what information would I have to record? Pause the video for a second and have a think. Well, I definitely need to know the coordinates for the centre of the image. I'd need to know its radius. I'd need to know the colour you wanted to fill it with. I'd also need to know the outline colour and also the outline width. If you were supplied with all this information, you could recreate the circle exactly without having to store the information for every single pixel that makes it up. We store this information as what's known as a drawing list, and it can look something like this. Now this isn't technically needed for your exam, but it's useful to know. So there's a scalable vector graphics format, SVG, which is an XML-based image format which was developed by the World Wide Web Consortium. Virtually all modern browsers have some form of support for rendering vector images in SVG format in browsers. So here was the list format that we showed you on the last page. And you can see in this SVG file, and you'd be able to edit it in a text file just like this, you can see the various properties of the circle with the values supplied. And then by parsing or reading this SVG file, it could recreate exactly the image of the previous page. But again, unlike a bitmap, we haven't had to store the information of every single pixel. In the exam, you might need to be able to create simple vector graphics from information provided. It could be provided in a number of formats shown already. And here's another, a table. Pause the video for a second, look at the properties and the values in the table on the left, and see if you can work out or recreate what would have to appear on the right. And there you go, that's what you should have got if you recreated it exactly. So you can see now how vector graphics can be really useful because no matter how big the image is, how many pixels it would actually take up if it was stored as a bitmap, we only have to, we only have to store text-based information in order to render the graphic.